Hi guys, in this quick tutorial, let's take a look at how to fix and recreate shapes that were inaccurately reconstructed during the photogrammetry reconstruction process. It happens a lot, most often with shiny surfaces or when there are no enough images, you often end up with surfaces that are noisy or have holes or have missing parts and so on. I'm going to show you the basic workflow and how to easily fix these things. Take a look at this model. We are in reality capture, but that's not very important. The workflow is the very same for MetaShape and so on. And when we take a look at the cross on the top of the church, you can immediately see that there is something wrong. And because the cross is kind of important part of the model, it's really ruining the experience. It immediately hits your eyes. When we open uh, one of the images from the dataset, you can see that the cross is shiny and that's the reason why it ended up like this, with this really distorted and noisy, noisy shape. But it's a simple shape, so it's gonna be really easy to fix it. Now we are immediately after reconstruction has been done. There is one model with 90 million triangles, which is kind of crazy high number. So as the first step, let's decimate our model to some meaningful number like 10 million. Okay, so now we have model with 10 million triangles, so we can turn on the solid mode. In the second step, let's clean up these ugly floating parts by using the filter, filter selection. So we are going to select the largest connected component. Now we will invert the selection to select only the floating parts and we will filter selection. Cool. So now our model is ready to be exported to the external sculpting software. So let's export it. And let's open it in the 3D code. I'm a fan of 3D code, but again, the, this tutorial, the important point of this tutorial is about in the workflow. It's not really important if you, what kind of sculpting app or 3D app you are going to use, if it's 3D code or ZBrush or Blender, the tools are pretty similar. So let's, let's open our exported file. We don't need voxelization. Let's auto scale it and click on apply. And we want to preserve the original dimensions. Okay. In this tutorial, I'm going to focus only on the cross. Of course, you know, I would like to cut off these ugly, ugly borders, but let's, let's make this one clear and short and focus only on the cross. Okay. So let's, let's turn on the uh, autographic projection by pressing number five to not worry about the perspective distortion. As the first step, let's duplicate our object. To have kind of a backup and a reference of the original shape. This sculpt tree, it works uh, in a similar way as the layers, for example, in Photoshop. So now we can cut off this ugly, ugly cross and we can turn on the backup layer to see kind of a reference of the original original cross and now let's recreate it with the very basic shapes as box so we will just simply put it here 
or is it axis just create the main main part like this It should be even thinner. Let's create a new layer for our new cross. Call it cross. No, I think this one is good, so click on apply. So I'll just simply rotate it like this to keep the with And okay, that's our new cross. We can see that it's in the very same position as the original one. And it looks much better. Of course, you could even play with it much more because you can see that in the original cross, the ends of its arms, let's say, are a little bit rounded, I would say. But for this tutorial, you know, like I think it's it's pretty it's pretty enough. So as the last step, you know, because now the cross in it is in a separate layer, kind of separate object. So now we will just merge it with our and move to our original object. So now it's uh, it's a part of this of this object. Okay, and that's it. Of course, this is an example with a very simple shape, but with these tools and workflow, you can recreate even really complex objects or easily fix things like missing parts or holes in walls and etc. So let's export the model with our new cross and import it back to the reality capture. Export, export selected object. Let's call it code. I'm not gonna decimate the model right now as we will use this model even for the next tutorial. So I click on cancel. Cancel decimation. Not to cancel export, this is a little bit confusing. Here we have our new code obg file we export it from the 3d code to import it back to reality capture we need also this .rc info file so i will just copy paste it here and rename it to to the code obg code obg.rc info right uh, i guess so this is kind of a little bit weird but uh, reality capture need this info file uh, along the obg file home sweet home back in reality capture so let's import our our new model or let's say updated model not a new one and it's there with our new fixed cross what do you think i would say it looks much better right when you switch to the original one <coughs> and to the new one I'm pretty sure you can see the difference. Cool. So now let's let's texture. 
our new model to see that the, the new shape is also properly textured. So let's unwrap it. I'm using four, four textures with the 4K resolution. Done. And let's texture it. And voila, magic is done. Our new cross is also properly textured. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. I hope it's gonna help you at least a bit. This option to export the model before texturing, make changes, fix things, etc. and then import it back to do texturing is really powerful. And it's well supported across all the photogrammetry software, so with Metashape you can do the very same thing. Don't forget to take a look at the final 3D presentation of this, of this church at crosscloud.com with even the panoramic images of the inner areas. You will find the link in the video description. In the next tutorial, we will take care of these ugly border areas. Thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned.